I gotta say, the smoke has gotten a lot better. Air quality index, um, down into the 140s, which means I can actually go outside now, but I still have a mask. It's not a very good mask, but it keeps 50% of the particulates out, which not as good as 95, um, which you go with the N95s, but we'll make do. And honestly, it's better than nothing. It'll keep half of the stuff out. It'll keep the smaller particles out. I mean, the larger particles out. The smaller particles are more, more dangerous, but you take what we can get at this point. I mean, like, the fact that you can see the Manhattan skyline already shows a substantial improvement. So, in case you're wondering why I'm going outside the day after historic smoke, when there's still smoke ongoing, I'm taking precautions. I was going to hold off, but I, I saw it spike again, so I want to get in just in case it goes back into the 200s at night. I want to make sure this is already over with. I mean... Not saying that air quality in the 140s is safe by any means, but it's not like the kind of smoke that can really like kill you. And I think that if you have asthma, the worst of it's over for you. So if you survive, which you should have, you should be all right now. Now, with the inclusion of my speech about the air quality, we do have a little bit of chemistry that we need to talk about. So, 15.1, this is the beginning of nuclear chemistry. Nuclear chemistry is a study of things involving nuclear. Before this, literally everything we've done in chemistry that involves reactions always involves electrons. It always involves reconfiguring atoms. This involves literally splitting an atom, and it involves the proton and the neutron. Radioactivity comes into play mainly because of the fact that you need to have a certain ratio of protons to neutrons in your It starts off being one to one, but later on you need to have more, which is why a lot of isotopes can be radioactive, although the most common ones usually aren't until we get into the 80s. Once you get above lead, there is no um, there, are, there are no stable isotopes, that mean there, there, there are no stable elements, well there are stable elements, but they're not stable isotopes. I still don't understand the actual practical difference between the two. Um, anything above lead, atomic number 82, has all radioactive isotopes. Now you might think that, um, wait, wait, so I told you that was E3, bismuth. Well, bismuth 209, the most common type of bismuth, by far, we found out in 2019 was actually very slightly radioactive. So there are no state totally stable isotopes of bismuth. There are some, you know, it's it's really stable, and its half life is 10 billion times longer than the age of the universe. But it is very slowly decaying. So. That's that. So, table, and I think it's going to show the half life table L is type of radiation. So, alpha particles are the least dangerous of nuclear um, reactions. They travel at about a tenth of the speed of light and they have an AMU of four. Two neutrons, two uh, protons. They can be represented with. Um, a squiggly symbol where that goes like this, or it can also be represented by helium because it is a, fundamentally a helium nucleus that's also plus two. Um, just so you know, in this case, charge goes on the bottom, so it's four and two, and then helium. Four is the mass, two is the charge, which is plus two. And you get either, like, he, the abbreviation for helium or for the thing, it really doesn't matter either way. Um, and yes, it's true that what this is, it, 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 it is just a, um, a helium nucleus. That's what it is. And it splits off. So if you have uranium-238 and it becomes thorium-234, it'll emit alpha rays, which are, again, 
the least dangerous um, tight and then it will also have that helium nucleus and again both the top and bottom numbers need to be balanced both the top I think that's the last one for a second both the top and bottom numbers need to be um, balanced <clears throat> so yeah that's why you get this but the thing is, an alpha usually happens when you have um, you, I don't know but like it changes the element and it also changes the mass whereas with beta rays to move beta negative to beta positive beta negative is an electron so essentially the element will go up one like with thorium 234 becomes um PA 234 that's what it actually is that's an example of um beta and then you could have beta go the other direction with a positron being emitted which is basically a positive electron so oh a negative one or a positive one uh, and then there's also where a neutron could be emitted out and it all depends on where it is and, ha and what the element is trying to do. Alpha rays are the least dangerous can be stopped by a thin sheet of paper but beta you need a thin sheet of metal and when beta rays are emitted you always also have gamma rays but you need a thick piece of metal to stop because um, beta rays are approaching the speed of light when they next to a mass they go about three the speed of light and gamma rays travel at the speed of light. And again, they, you need to be very careful with the, that kind of radiation. You need thick metal to stop it. Like lead, although lead is poisonous. Aluminum will not stop a gamma ray. It might stop a beta ray, you know, definitely stop an alpha ray, but, you know. Half-lives are also important, which are on table N. Uh, a half-life will um, you need to determine what the mass of a certain thing is. That's just math. Um, you just like take the years over that and find out how many half-lives and half-lives. You need to do some exponent stuff. Annoyingly, you're not taught logarithms, which actually can really help if you need to know how many half-lives have passed. You could have just done log base two of whatever and gotten your number of half-lives, but they don't teach it that way, which is, I find annoying and stupid. Um, because logs are the correct way of learning it, realistically. Now, going forward on this, um, you know, we talked about the nuclear reactions and what happened. Um, so I actually think I might be done with this video. And I still don't actually think I need to know that's already stuff. I feel like this kind of smoke happens more frequently than we like it.